emailing it would be a good way, uh, posting it into OneDrive, persisting it somewhere, so you could build a library of things that, that have been spoken by the synthesizer, and then you can, after that, do whatever you want with it. So that's one scenario. Then the other one is how to play speech audio in the background. Like my little dungeon crawler scenario I was talking about there. Uh, let's say that you're, you are crawling through a dungeon. You might want to hear the ambiance. That's why the demo is called ambiance, you know? The ambiance of the dungeon where you can hear maybe the actual water dripping in the background. The cool thing is that because we're using a media element, there's nothing preventing us from using a second media element to play audio because you can have two media elements playing at the same time. Of course, if you play two media elements playing voices, you're going to have overlapping voices. It's going to be annoying. But if it's a background soundtrack, a sound effect or something, that's something that plays. Uh, sorry, I, this is the scenario here. I was talking about the sound effects and music. I'll come back to the previous one. So by using a second media element here, for example, I'm getting my folder, I'm getting a file like mysoundeffects.wave. I open the file using get file async, and then I open that file in read mode. And then once I have it, now I have a file stream with an audio file loaded. I set that as the source of my media player. And then I can also set it to looping because it's a, it's a background audio, and then I can play it. And now coming back to this scenario right here is playing speech audio in the background. Let's say that you have a long piece of text. Like I have a demo I'm going to show you, I call it custom audiobooks, where you're taking these, these texts from all these great classics that are part of the public domain, like uh, Moby Dick or The Prince or The Scarlet Letter and things like that, and you want to convert them into an actual audiobook that's read by the speech synthesizer. Well, a book is long. You know, it's going to be a lot of reading. So, of course, you'll want to chop it up by paragraphs or, or maybe chapters or sections. But even then, the odds are at some point, maybe the user is going to want to go back and do something in Windows. They don't want to keep the application in the foreground at all times. So, is it possible to play the audio in the background without, uh, while you're looking maybe at email or you're doing other work? And the answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. So for this demo, I'm going to show how to do it on Windows Phone, on Windows Store, because there's an easy way using the media element. Because the media element is actually has a feature called Audio Category equals Background Capable Media. Uh, this, even though this code technically compiles on Windows Phone, it's not going to work on Windows Phone. For Windows Phone background audio, you have to use a background audio agent. And that's something that was actually covered in the Windows Phone 8.1 Jumpstart right here on MVA. So there's a, a full module and doc, uh, the documentation is right here on screen at aka.ms uh, WP81 back audio. Uh, oh, sorry, there's the typo here in the slide. So let me just delete this. So this is the proper link. There you go. See, live slides. Um, so WP81 back audio, but also you can look at uh, MVA search for, search for the Windows Phone 8.1 jumpstart, and then in there there's an entire module on how to create background audio. It's a little beyond the scope of uh, of the time we have left for this. So let me show you a few uh, a few demos here. Uh, the background audio task, as you'll see in the demo, you have to first of all create the background task. So you have to go inside of the package that Apex manifest. Under declarations, you have to add the background task as a declaration. You have to set that the task type is going to be audio and then specify the entry point of your app. And the sound effects and music, we covered this. So let me show you a few demos here. I'm going to show you, again, the ambiance demo, the custom audiobooks, and there's also the speech synthesis. I'll wrap up a few demos. And then uh, that's going to be the end of module two. So let's, uh, let's go back to demos. So first of all, uh, in Visual Studio, if I look at uh, my background audio, my audio playing my sound effects, you'll notice that right here at the top, I have a second media element called FX1 Player. And FX1 Player is simply initialized here as a new media element where I am using uh, this uh, audio file right here, which comes from uh, freesound.org. Attribution is coming right here below, so thank you very much. And this is simply like background noise with like water dripping in the background. So to, to play the background audio, uh, we simply, again, we open the file asynchronously. 
Um, and then uh, we create a file stream based on that file where you open it asynchronously in read mode. And then once we have that stream, we simply set it as our source. We set looping on the media element, which is our media player, to true. And then we can start playing it. So even if we have another media element with speech, we will be able to, uh, to hear what's being said. So for example, if I come here and I run this demo, so again, I'm going to pick, uh, maybe I'll go with Susan this time. And then I'm going to lower the, the speed a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger the background audio. So listen to this. You'll see it's just like dripping. It's kind of subtle. So you can hear the water dripping, right? Cool. All right. And now let's cue our dungeon master. You are standing at the entrance of a dungeon. And there you the go. air is so now cold and damp. The voice is talking. It's a little slower. You can hear some water dripping, echoing in the background. And we can actually hear the water dripping, echoing in the background. Okay, so that was one thing. One thing I also didn't show earlier. Let me take a minute just to show you this. Actually, let me restart this. Is what happens if you pass an English string to a different voice? Like for example, I said how Stefan is German. Well. Stefan is basically going to speak with a thick German accent, but trying to speak English. You are standing at the entrance of a dungeon. There you go. The air so is I'm cold sure and damp. German folks out there that you speak can English hear some water dripping, echoing in the background. <laughs> but anyway, this is what happens if you if somebody would use their default voice to read in English, even though they would expect German. And it's the same thing with uh, the other languages. Now. Um, the, when I spoke about SSML earlier, let me go to the voice synthesis. This is a demo that runs on uh, Windows 8.1. You can easily use the same techniques on Windows Phone. It's part of our Windows SDK demos. So this one shows you how to you do uh, default speak text. You see how on Windows, we only have uh, David and Zira, which are the American voices. And for some reason on Windows 8.1, uh, even with um, the, the, the language pack for US, we get Hazel. And Hazel, I think, is Susan's cousin. She's also British. So I can say, for example, David. And the voices are different. You notice here is David, it's not Mark. So the voices are slightly different. So if I play, I play a speak. The quick red fox jumped over the lazy brown dog. So David has a slightly deeper voice than Mark by default. Um, and we have Zira, which is very similar to the Zira voice on Windows Phone. The quick red fox jumped over the lazy brown dog. But then we have the SSML capability right here, where we have this full sentence, like this sentence has marks. You can put marks inside of SSML. And then once you turn it, turn it into an audio stream, what you can do is you can extract those, those marks, and then you can go and add them back inside of the media player. And then the media player can respond to those marks. But that's beyond the scope of this chapter right now. I'll make sure to blog about it uh, in the near future. Uh, then we have the phoneme right here, where we have the word <coughs> whatchamacallit. So let's see what it would sound like when David says it. This sentence has marks here and another mark here. This is an example of how to speak the word whatchamacallit. This is an example of how to use the say as tag to say a date February 11th, 2015. This fourth example is how to use the ordinal data type. There you go. So now we have uh, this, uh, this easy capability to manipulate a voice. And the last demo that I wanted to show you here is for the, the background capable audio. I'm going to use this little demo here called uh, Custom Audiobooks. So it's this one here on my, let me just make sure I open it from the right source on my desktop. Okay, so my custom audiobooks, there you go. So custom audiobooks is a little bit more of a, of a not full-fledged, but it's a little bit more of an advanced app where I've got these audiobooks that are sitting uh, right here inside of uh, a JSON data source. So you can see here I have 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Moby Dick. Uh, I even have a book called The Spirit of Brevity. It's basically a fake book so that I can reach the end in one sentence. It's by Nick Landry. Uh, then The Prince and The Scarlet Letter and The Time Machine. And this one here, when I play it on Windows, you'll notice, let me just play it and you'll, under, you'll notice that so this is what the uh, application looks like. So I can come here, I can pick a book, and I can say, for example, I want to read uh, Moby Dick. 
I get the full text on screen, and then when I right click here, I can say, okay, now start reading this to me. Is it reading? Moby Dick. Oh, there he goes. So it starts by Herman reading. Melville. The Moby cool thing Dick also is that by using a media whale, element, you can also pause. So I can say, is enough. pause this, don't read. And now, by Herman resume. Melville considered an outstanding so work of romanticism in the American Renaissance. Before. We could stop chapter one. We could not resume. What it was. We had to start over. Call so me for Ishmael. Of course, really important. Some years ago, pause. never mind how long. Precisely so now, having little or no money in my purse and nothing particular reading. to interest me on shore. Focus, I thought I would sail about a little and see the watery I'm part of the world. Audio capability. It so this is enabled by uh, a few things. First of all. In the uh, Windows version right here, I have my XAML page. And you'll notice that in the XAML right here, I have my media player. Let me just look for it. Actually, let me go full screen on this. Okay, button. I'm looking for my media element on this. Scroll down. Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong, um, the wrong page. I have to go to the, the item page. This is where the media element resides. So inside of this one here, let me scroll this up. Now, right here, you can see that I have a media element. And my media element is my audiobook media player. And on this one, I have the uh, background capable media. The thing also is the media player, if you put it directly in XAML, you can actually see the controls. So for example, if I uh, the, the transport controls are enabled uh, and they're set. So right now they're, they're set to true, but I can actually set the height. For example, I'll set the height equals uh, 50, for example. So now you're going to see the, uh, the media controls right here that are going to show up, or you should at least. So if I come to Moby Dick, you see here there's the full media element is showing up right here. So now if I start playing this, So it's Moby start Dick. Playing. You see now, By Herman you can see Melville. the full, it's a 13 minute Moby Dick chapter, or just to the read whale. this. And then you can scroll forward, you can change the volume, is a novel by volume. Herman Melville considered an outstanding work of romanticism so in the American Renaissance. Pause this. So th this is a media element you can use. And this one here actually lets you play in the background thanks to that background capable media right here. But then you also have to implement a few things in code to do this, and I know I'm running out of time now, but um, if I come in the code right here, I have to implement something called the system media transport controls because as the application is going in and out of focus, like in the background and in the foreground, you have to be able to track the media controls so that the user might be able to control them directly maybe from their keyboard if they have the capability because it's a media player. But in terms of so that's why we have these initialized transport controls right here. So as the media controls are raising events, you have to be able to uh, raise the same events back on your own media controller. And then here we're tracking every time a media control is pressed. So if we press pause on the, the controls or play, then we have to affect our own media player. And the same thing goes for the media element. Every time the status changes, if it's closed, opening, buffering, or paused, then we have to change the status back to the system media controls. So you have the application level media controls, and you have the system level media controls. These events are simply there to make sure that they're going to stay in sync. So one doesn't think it's playing when the other one thinks it's paused. And then the play button, as you can see, is very simple. We, uh, if we're paused, we simply play. And if we were not uh, paused, so it's the first time we're running it, we're simply passing in the text. We're saying read text. In this case, the read text is simply using the, the default settings. We're not changing the voice or anything like it. So if I go to definition, you can see here we're simply using the first voice, female, United States. We're creating our stream. And then we're simply playing it with the media player. And the fact that we have background audio is right here in the package.apex manifest, where under, so first of all, speech capability, I have my microphone enabled because that's for the speech SDK. And then under declarations, right here, I have my background task that's been enabled. So you select here, you pick background task, add, it shows up here, then you set audio and the entry point, which is basically the name of your app by default. So that's 
a lot of information, as you can see, just a few lines of code to make the computer talk, but with uh, more capabilities like SSML, background audio, you can actually create some really cool scenarios. So let's go back to our slides and wrap this module up. So that was our demo right here. And now, uh, it, very quickly, uh, across platforms, and I'll spend too much time on this, but it's just to show how uh, Windows Phone and Windows Store are stacking up when we look at Android and iOS. So iOS has a lot of languages, as we can see. They actually support a lot more languages than the other platforms. But Windows Phone is definitely the platform that, first of all, it's the only platform that has full male and female voices. All the others, including Windows Store, only have partial where most of the voices are female. But one, uh, it is a few male voices in there. Everybody can do speech synthesis offline, change the voice rate, pitch, and volume, but only Windows, Windows Phone, and Android support SSML. iOS does not. Um, everybody can kind of stop, pause, resume, even though on Android it's a little trickier to, to, to do this. Uh, you can also save the speech and audio file on all platforms except iOS. Uh, to play audio in the background, it's really native on Windows, Windows Phone, and iOS. For Android, you would actually have to use a media player, which is not the standard way of doing speech on there. You would have to convert into a, a file and then use that file to play it in their media player, which is more, it's a, it's a, trickier, way, a trickier way of doing it. But Android does have uh, something cool, which is, uh, since Android is a fully 